The Texas Chainsaw Massacre is an independent horror film from 1974 directed by Toby Hooper. It's widely regarded as one of the best horror films of all time and undoubtedly impacted the horror genre in ways we still see today. In the film, the family unit of brothers are the main threat against their protagonists. They are the oldest brother, the cook, played by Jim Seadell, the hitchhiker, played by Ed Neal, and Leatherface, played by Gunnar Hansen. In this original movie, the cook is mostly the brains behind the operation and seems to boss his younger brothers around, per Toby Hooper on the commentary for the film. He's also the one behind the gas station slash barbecue shop. However, Leatherface is the one that ended up stealing the show, mainly because of his horrifying appearance and his brutal methods of killing. In the film, Leatherface wears the face of the victims over his own. During this first movie, he wears three different masks. And today, we're going to do a dive into why he has three different masks, as well as what those masks are doing in more recent years. Leatherface's first of his disturbing skin masks is the killing mask. It's referred to by this because he wears it whenever he's hunting slash killing the teens. The appearance of this mask looks like dried skin with a brace holding the mouth agape. It has eyebrows and hair attached to the top. Across the top are also stitches, which give the appearance of holding it together. It also features a small rope near the neck, which helps hold it together and also to be worn. The mask is worn during the first sequence of the film, in which the teens go into Leatherface's house and are killed. It also is used during the first chase scene with Sally, which once she's brought home by the cook, Leatherface is changed into his next mask. The next mask worn by Leatherface is that of the old lady mask. It's been dubbed this due to the gray hair and demeanor Leatherface takes while wearing the mask. Leatherface also dons a homely apron during the scene. At this point, Leatherface is helping to prepare dinner for the dinner scene in the movie, as well as getting Grandpa ready for dinner. This is also the outfit worn by Leatherface when he's berated by the cook for what he did to the door. Finally, Leatherface's last mask is the mask he wears during the dinner scene and the climax of the movie. Leatherface wears what's called the Pretty Woman Mask, which is dubbed this because of the makeup that's applied across it. He puts on the mask to put on his best face for the guest, just like people would dress up for a formal dinner. Note that Leatherface also wears a suit. Ultimately, this is the outfit that Leatherface would wear during the final chase scene with Sally and her escape. So now that we've established the different masks and why Leatherface wears each, we can now move on to how these masks are doing in more recent times. The Killing Mask was last known to be owned by Randy Carpenter, as noted by TexasChainsawMassacre.net. He purchased the mask from someone who had gotten it from Bob Burns, who made all three masks for the film. It's noted on the site that Bob had kept the mask in a shoebox in his closet for many years before selling it. Once he removed the mask from the closet, he placed it on a styrofoam head with a sealant, which caused it to become hard over time. Here's a photo of what it looks like. As you can tell, it looks like it's decayed, almost like real skin might have. It kind of looks like it's melting. Honestly, it makes it even creepier than it already was. This has been over a decade that these photos were taken, so if anybody knows Randy or what's happened with the mask... Comment below, because I'd love to see some pictures from more recent times. Next is the old lady mask. This mask was purchased at auction by an unknown seller for around $9,200. Again, Bob Burns had possession of the mask after filming, but this one was found in storage. It was originally given to Ed Neal, who played the hitchhiker in the movie. He then proceeded to sell it in the aforementioned auction. Here are photos of what it looked like when it sold. It looks to be in better shape than the killing mask, as far as how it looks but it's definitely falling apart and it's cracked it definitely looks like it's age and again this is not the most recent photo of this mask so if anybody knows the buyer maybe can provide more recent photos i'd love to see those finally is the pretty woman mask this mask has a pretty similar story as the old lady mask ed neil received it from bob burns and then he sold it at an auction it looks like it went for a little more than thirteen thousand dollars here's what it looks like now it looks to be in about the same condition as the old lady mask, although it's in more one piece than either of the others. And it seems to have kept its shape, although you can definitely tell it's cracked and, I mean, it shows its age. But I'd love to see more recent photos of this. 
Just recently, the University of Texas in Austin had an article about a mask seen here, which was a prototype mask made by Bob Burns for the This one looks flattened, but they're trying to preserve it by adding a layer of protection. They hope to keep it preserved and keep it at the Harry Ransom Center collection of historic film props at the university. Ultimately, the masks from this film are iconic and are grill items for most horror fans. In their most recent photos, they all looked in poor condition, so hopefully they're still around today. Every day, people are digging up cool props from the past, so it wouldn't shock me if someone came out that they own one of these and that they're wanting to show how it looks now. And, you know, maybe someday somebody's going to want to sell one of these. And, I mean, if they do... They're definitely going to go more than the 9213000 that they went for before. Just recently, a mask from Jason Goes to Hell went for over 90000 So if a mask like that can go for it in auction, just imagine what one of these could go for. Thanks for watching the video, and I'll see you guys next time.